Welcome to Piggy Banks to Wall Street, the show that brings you the greatest minds in financial education. Piggy Banks to Wall Street is brought to you by Wenrick Wealth. To learn more about how Wenrick Wealth can help you plan for your future, or for a second opinion on your current plan, visit www.wenrickwealth.com or call 949-547-4313. Now your host, wealth manager, financial literacy advocate, and author of the book, Teaching Kids to Buy Stocks, Stories and Lessons for Grownups, J.J. Wenrick. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Piggy Banks to Wall Street. Appreciate you being here. I'm here with Victoria, the founder of Money Munch Kids, the curriculum for financial education for children. Excited to have you here today, Victoria. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, JJ. It's, uh, it's great to finally chat, and I've loved all your episodes so far, and I'm so glad that you invited me. All right. I appreciate you checking them out. I've, uh, I've been an admirer of what you're doing since I was in the research phase of my book that, that I wrote. I started to look out there to see what is out there for kids and financial education. And you were one of the first things that popped up with your workbooks and curriculum. And then I'd, I'd see you on Instagram doing the homeschool <laughs> conferences. And I thought, oh, this, this woman is my hero. Oh, oh my gosh, it's so sweet. Um, it's actually the saddest part about everything the way it is right now is I miss getting to see everyone at all the conferences and all the people I would meet who I, you know, only knew on, you know, through Instagram. We've been, we've talked across Instagram and Facebook and stuff for like a while. And I, I don't know, like you're, I'm always seeing your posts and stuff and it's wonderful. So I'm super stoked. <laughs> Well, great. I'm, I'm excited to have you on here. Kind of excited to hear your journey and how you ended up doing this. I, when I was just researching your, your books, and I can tell you put an extraordinary amount of effort <laughs> and research into building this curriculum. You've got all sorts of uh, different you know, accreditations, different things that I hadn't even thought of when I was writing my book. I'm like, wow, she really did a nice professional job here. So maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but what, uh, what is it? First of all, maybe we'll start. So, with- <laughs> uh, yeah, it's actually, it's, it's funny because it is our headlining product, our um, homeschool curriculum for financial education. And as you, I see, uh, you got it already uh, shown in the picture there. It's a, a set with an instructor's guide and a single student workbook. And what's cool about it is that we have workbooks starting at um, suggested kindergarten, first, second, and three plus. Uh, so that's third grade and up. And the instructor's guide actually works for all of them. And this was something that was very important. And one of those little things that you mentioned about, like there's a bunch of effort that went into it. And one of the things that I actually spoke to teachers went in the process of making it and had teachers um, internationally, nationally and internationally work on it. And one of the things I was like, hey guys, like what's something that bugs you about curriculums that like you wish as a teacher or a parent and they were like, please don't make everyone buy like multiple copies. And I was like, we can do that. So, and of course that helps with the whole, like we were encouraging people to save money and be financially frugal and financially aware and having parents not have to buy like multiple sets and just be able to learn as a family as their children get older or for families with multiple kids like that is something parents love and I'm thrilled that it got put into the making process uh, so uh, there's that curriculum and you can actually go on our website and there's a full page with like lots of details and nitty-gritty about like the curriculum with samples parents can look at on our website and that's just um, moneymunchkids.com just how it's spelled in that example there so um do you want me to, to go ahead and like, I don't know, go into the, the process? <laughs> Is there any yeah, specific yeah. questions? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, what made you decide to want to do this and, and what was the process? I guess two questions in one. I always, I want to always tell them I need a shorter story, but like there, there wasn't really like this decision. It just, many things in my life just kind of, it happens and it, what happened is I actually have a little brother and I had some friends graduating college and I, throughout my college career, 
help take care of a lot of children of friends and, and friends of friends. And I kept seeing my little brother was like, he was like six or something at the time. And actually he, one of the characters is inspired by him is Logan, the little character that's holding up the bank book, which is super cute. One of these days I'm going to actually release the original photo that's from, uh, and then he'll hate me forever because he's a teenager <laughs> now. <laughs> But um, it, him and a bunch of other kids I knew were like starting to talk about buying things and having their parents buy stuff, stuff for them. That's all I heard. Just like, bye, 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 bye. And I was like, okay, like we need to teach them how to not do just purchasing, like do like saving or like really thinking and planning about their money. And then I had friends who were graduating college and I was like, oh, awesome. So like, are you doing a deferment for your like loans and stuff? And they're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, 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 do you have loans? And, they're, and, and they were just so financially unaware. And it was like, like, it was like this little spark in my brain went, Bleep! and I was like, oh, this is a problem. <laughs> and it's a generational problem. And so I started just for my own little brother and for my own sake, poking at, you know, poke the bear. And uh, I found that there was, there was a, uh, some stuff for like high schoolers and like college age kids, but not a lot for like elementary grade. And the more I did research, the more I found that statistically children in the elementary grades as young as four or five years old start developing habits and financial habits. And that's when they start asking these questions and I'm like, wait a minute, hold on, wait, if they're developing these habits and they're learning and they're absorbing this stuff, like, why, why aren't we teaching them? Like, this is so, finance is like so complicated and we're not teaching them anything until they get into high school. And at that point they can already open up a credit card. And so I was like, oh, my heart. <laughs> and then uh, I just, you know, started having ideas and things. And next thing I know I was putting pen to paper and, and. I, I would say Money Munchkins was born because it wasn't like an on-purpose thing. It just happened. And I, here we are. <laughs> so it was very organic, very natural, very much a necessity of the mother of invention. So yeah, you see, <laughs> you see a need and you, you solve for that need. Yeah. And, and actually, right. um, first we had a, an after school program. We don't have it anymore. I'm sorry. Um, but, and then it just became activity books. And then I had people saying, oh, we should do like a curriculum for schools or for homeschooling. And I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so was your background in education or was it in finance? What'd you go to school for? Art? Marketing. Marketing. All right, well, there you go. <laughs> it covers uh, it all. It, uh, it, I do feel like marketing is the language of, of businesses talking to people and being able to make things relatable and understandable. And so that was, I feel like a large component in looking at these, like how banks work and making that understandable at a, at a child's learning level without dumbing it down or using words that aren't the actual vocabulary words. Like we do actually use like checking account, bank account, we use uh, debt, ROI, interest in our, like, in our kindergarten curriculum. So nothing is like, like dumbed down. It's just explained in a more simple fashion. And of course, we're not going into like the most depth that you could because they don't need to know that yet. Yeah, so, jargon's fine as long as you explain it. Exactly. And you explain it in a way that they're going to care and that they understand why they should remember this. And I think that was also a big component is making sure that everything was interconnected and understandable as to how, you know, a child doing like a yard sale or, a, you know, a lemonade stand and how that relates to how their parents make money and how that relates to what taxes is and, and how banks work and just kind of connecting all those concepts for them. Because a lot of these are big concepts and it's really hard for children. They don't understand how everything connects. We as adults do because, of course, we're making the money, paying the bills, keeping the lights on, right? <laughs> so if you want to go out there and just find the individual worksheets online or use our free digital downloads that we have on our site, like, have at it. But one thing I found that was the biggest difficulty for me when I was looking for stuff for my little brother was every, there was a lot of stuff that was, like, individual worksheets, individual little projects and things. And I was like, why isn't there anything, like, comprehensive? Mm -hmm. uh, something that parents can go from start to finish. And, and I, like I said, we worked with national and international teachers. So everything's like science, like based, it's research based. Um, there was a lot of 
fun because I got both told by children, parents, and teachers that I was wrong a lot. And I was like, okay, <laughs> so long as you can prove what you're saying, um, or why I'm wrong, then it goes in the book. Like, uh, and a great example of that is when we actually had the after school program. Uh, children are so much smarter than you think they are because I have a lot of parents that are always like, uh, how, are you sure my child can learn like at kindergarten? I'm like, trust me, they can. <laughs> and a great example about how, how children's brains works and works differently than adults, but they still understand so much was we were doing a project on needs and wants. And that's something we cover a lot because it's, a, it's really important, especially when your children are asking for things they really don't need. And they're like, I have to have it. I need it. You know? You um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, one of the kids, like they had, we had all these different pictures on this worksheet and we we're like, okay, like circle the items that you need and not the items that you want. And one of the pictures was an airplane. And so this child had circled an airplane as a need that was like, defend your statement. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, she had family that lived uh, overseas and it was a regular trip for them as a family, as like their vacation or something to go see, uh, I think it was her grandparents. And she's actually, she's actually the inspiration for one of the characters. Uh, <laughs> I won't say which though, uh, but it is one of the girl characters and uh, she, she was a very great learning experience. And so she was explaining to me that in order to see her grandparents, she needed to go on a plane. And I was like, you understood the lesson. Like, <laughs> it's not what I would have thought and not what the correct answer, but you understood the concept. And it just baffled me over and over again how these children really understood. And I, I when I originally did it, did the curriculum all the materials, I was like, I don't, I don't know if this is going to be like understandable, both for like the program that we had and the curriculum and over and over again, I hear even now today from parents sending me, because they, sometimes they send us pictures of like worksheets and stuff, which is like, it's the cutest. Um, and I'm still baffled by these kids that just get it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is, this was needed and it was, and it's, it's right there when they need it at the level that they can understand it. And it's, it's, it's making more of a difference than I thought it was going to be. And it's, it's gone into so much, it's become more, it's become more than what I thought it was originally going to become. And I'm thrilled and excited and terrified. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, entrepreneur. <laughs> Good thing you got all that input from the start, because at least you know that you've got the confidence that it's all the right way. And <laughs> It's amazing how much kids can really understand these concepts. And I, I'm thrilled to have to be part of this kind of, I, I guess, like a financial awakening uh, mm -hmm. and like a, a revolution of like teaching life skills. Um, it's just, it's humbling and amazing. And I, I love that something that you mentioned that we have a bunch of accreditations uh, and that's part of, I really wanted to make sure that we were, um, it wasn't just, these are my ideas and I hope they work, you know, like people tested it and we had beta testers and we asked for feedback from parents all the time. So parents, if you have my curriculum and you're watching this, please send me feedback. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we, we actually focus something was teaching on a variety of, of learning styles. And I think that's also super important with difficult concepts. So I don't know that it, it, cause I know you also, you do financial education for adults as well, right? Yeah, I do it for adults and I do it for teenagers. And yeah. I, I have a, a list of younger age, middle school and below that want to do a class. And I'm a little intimidated by it because I <laughs> want to make sure I do it the right way. And it's easier for me to talk to teenagers. Um, because yeah, you're right. There's, there's methodologies to it. And I did get a, um, a financial education, certified financial education instructor, um, designation just cause I wanted to, to make sure I knew some of the methodology a little bit more. And that was a good program for me to go through, but there's just a lot to education yeah. that is beyond just knowing the subject matter. 
and wanted to you know, just want to be careful, want to make sure that I that I get that the right way. Because the way I wrote my book, it's more in story form, and then it gets into more the the nuts and bolts of, of valuing stocks and. Um, was pretty comfortable doing that, but then when it comes to sitting down, I mean, it's written for adults. But yeah, then when sitting down with young kids, it's you know, it, it's different. Yes, uh, but you're one of the things you'd said is that you know, kids understand more than we give them credit. And if you don't think they're listening, wait until you know, wait until you're <laughs> at dinner with the uh, with the pastor and his wife, and they you know, they drop some bomb on you, you know, right. <laughs> But that was part of what inspired me to start to write my stuff, my stories down and to just talk about it. Cause it really had started with me teaching my kids the basics of- I safety. love that by the way, like uh, in your book. Cause when I started reading it, I was like, oh, like, cause I knew you had kids, but, and it, it's really, I mean, necessity is the mother of invention. You're like, oh, I gotta teach my kids. And then you yep. wrote a book. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I started to tell, you know, I started ta- t- teaching my kids stuff and then I would tell stories about teaching my kids either on Facebook to people or just in my day-to-day career that I had at the time where I was working, my clients were, were investment professionals. Yeah. And I'd be talking to them about the stuff I told my kids. And then one day I was showing my oldest, um, Max, his investment account because we challenged him to save, challenged him to oh, buy nice. stocks. And he says, well, I've got cash in there. I didn't know I had cash in there. I go, well, that's coming from your dividends from your Apple stock. So we go in and we look at the dividend history and he sees, oh, wow, every three months I get a little bit of cash in there and it's gone up each month because they raised their dividend. And that's he awesome. cocks his head, looks at me and says, so if I just keep buying shares, then when I'm old like you, I won't have to <laughs> I love work that. All the time. I can just let those shares pay me money. I'm like, yeah, that's that's the idea. Of course, I don't know that he's saved a dime since that date because he's turned into a teenager and there's other things. Now they can buy things, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, it was just seeing how well they understood a lot of the concepts that made me think, all right, you know, if there's a if I can present this in a way that's easier for adults to absorb as well. That was that was the idea, and you know, I always you know one of the things I did professionally is I did a lot of speeches for, on what's going on in the market, and yeah. people would always say do that thing where you make it a little bit simpler than it really is. And, Teach me like I know nothing. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like a child. Yep. And so that yeah, but but just seeing how well the kids understood it, I, I thought all right, maybe we have maybe we have something here where that would be helpful for adults to understand it as well. So that's actually, it's really funny. Um, stocks is actually, I, I'm not, I'm not an expert. I'm not, I actually, I actually just took um, Dave Ramsey's course for adults actually. So I'm like, I like tastily like wrote everything down. I had, I had read a couple of his books prior and I grew up with my dad was like a big entrepreneur self-help guy. So I had read, like I grew up on, where's my rich dad? I have my rich dad, poor dad, my, my bookshelf right up here. So I'm like, I know it's somewhere here. And uh, I'm actually doing a <laughs> plug. Uh, I'm playing and doing cash flow online plays with uh, kids and families. And so you can actually go sign up on our website to play cash flow online with me. Um, wow, because cool. I, I mean, I mean, it, it's entirely selfish. No one wants to play this game with me because <laughs> so, cause I love it so much. I have the board game. No one will play with me because um, it's like a commitment game. But um, so I grew up with all of that. And that said, I'm, I'm not a financial advisor. I know very little about this. I have people all the time at the shows used to come up to me and ask me like, what would you do about this? And I'm like, I, don't, I teach kids. Like, this is not, <laughs> I know nothing. Um, but my favorite section of our workbook is our stock section. And we have a whole chapter on socks and like parents are always like, what? And I was like, yeah, yeah, we teach about stocks. And, and, I, and we, we talk about dividends and the kids get to make their own stock certificates. And it is so much fun because I honestly just love seeing the face that parents make when they're reading it and they're like, oh, like this is, yeah, <laughs> it's like the best. Because <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, we teach like super complicated stuff. I mean, but again, it's at that simple level and it's, it's talking with the kids at the level that they're at. 
I, I have actually referred my little brother for your course. Um, I don't know that my dad has signed him up yet, but or if he will, because I don't know what his workload is for school. But I was like, hey guys, go take the course. Because <laughs> <laughs> my little brother's probably sick and tired of like getting financial education stuff from me at this point. <laughs> oh, my, my sister's got this finance thing. She won't leave me alone about it. <laughs> It's really cute because he like he's done with the classes, but he's also like it's really sweet because he's like super proud. He's also like this is me, like I'm on the cover, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> you're gonna hate me in like ten years when you're dating. But <laughs> <laughs> I had gone over these books so many times, I was like, I'm sick of it. No, and of course the minute it came out, everyone's like, do you have anything for like middle schoolers or high schoolers? And I'm like, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just put this out. I just finished. My least favorite question to get is, so what, what's your next book? I'm like, I'm not yeah, a right? I just wrote a book. I <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> chill. <laughs> like there's this whole thing about, especially with entrepreneurs, where as soon as you finish something, everyone's asking, what's next? Well, what are you going to do next? And it's like, can we, can we sit in this for a little bit? Right. Uh, like, and just enjoy this. Uh, but at this point, yeah, we, you know, I've, we're always working on one next. It does push you a little bit. So I, I do like that, and I, I also love I also love criticism. So if anyone has criticism, um, and the books are far from perfect. That's actually my favorite part. I think of the books is the, the page in the back. There's a page that says, and I, I don't even remember what book I saw this is when I was a child, but it actually it was something I saw as a child in a book. It was like, hey, if you see a mistake, let us know, and we'll send you. I think it was a dollar back then too. I don't know. But so there's this page in the back of the book where if kids spot an error. And there are some, um, <laughs> I know for a fact, <laughs> um, you can report it on our website and we will send you a dollar in the mail. And I think I've done it like only about a handful of times and I'm just like, come on, keep them coming. You guys just rip me a new one. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> I, I want to see, I want, I, because that, that's, you know, that's exciting for a child. And I love that it inspires that, that idea that even though like this person wrote this book, they're still learning, they're still accepting of yeah. criticism and change. And I think that is one of the most important lessons to teach, especially with financial education, is that you, you will never know all the answers. There's always, there's always new stuff. I mean, look, look at the new world we're in right now. So. Yep. Um, but if you're always, if you're always able to learn, then like, I think you're always ready for new situations. And, hopefully also new challenges like your next book, JJ. Yes. <laughs> I'm excited for it. I'm excited. I want to see what else you got, bro. I, I didn't want to write this book. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, <right? laughs> that's, and that's not true. That's not true, but uh, kind of true, but not true. Um, by the time you're done with it, by the time it's published, you're like, I didn't want to write this. I don't want to with it. There's too many edits. <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, <laughs> uh, no. But it's, you know, like a lot of subject matters, it's infinite depth. You know, you'll yeah. never... You'll never learn it all. I mean, there's people that, have, especially when it comes to the stock market, I mean, finance in general, but investing can get quite complicated. And there's you know, people that have been doing it for 50, 60 years and they learn, yeah. they learn something new every day. So it's, it's, uh, it's an infinite depth, but that's also why I love it is because it's also, it's also changing. Yeah. Uh, kind, of, kind of surfing, you're, you're riding something that's moving, you're riding the water. Yeah with uh, markets, you know, the minute you think you know it, there's a, a portfolio manager I used to know and he said, it's like you're putting a puzzle together, you don't know what the picture is and someone's dumping pieces on it while you're putting together. <laughs> That's I love I mean. it, yes, <laughs> yes. It's a Bruce Lee quote that says, uh, be like water and it's, it's that the ever changing circumstances uh, or the condition of it, be adaptive to what's going on and to be open to changing your plan your approach and I also, and i do want to that's right i do want to point this out because i i feel a very strong i don't know like a duty to the community there's a, the neurodiverse community where our products are adhd friendly they're neurodiverse friendly they're dyslexia friendly um we were reviewed by Adi, uh, attitude magazine which is adhd and ld magazine and there's also um we're autism approved by the autism hope lines and i just I really wanted to make sure, again, suitably with making sure that the material was understandable to these, these children of various ages, to make sure that everyone was able to, as much many people as possible, we could teach as many kids as possible and get it, 
get this information in the hands of the people and the families who need it for their children like the most. And so I really, I really feel a strong connection to try to, and, and as educators, we just want to teach people, you know, <laughs> we just, we just want to make their lives better. So. No, but it's such a good job of you to, to care about that stuff and to put the time and effort to figure out, all right, what are the criteria? How it do was I make fun. Sure? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, really? I mean, you could have put the workbooks out without doing that and would have probably been just fine, but you miss a big percentage that need it, um, need that information as well. So good for you for doing that. That was actually why I did it. Cause I saw that there wasn't a lot. And the more I like, even now, I'm, I, I want to push more. I, I, I hope to one day have a Braille version available for like special order, but it is super expensive to Braille a 300 page book. <laughs> so, and I'm like, I just, I don't know how this is going to work. Um, but you know, and it's, it's, it's the same thing with, with how I started with even creating Money Munch Kids was that I saw that as I was doing research and looking into children's books and uh, I went into looking what fonts are best for children because, you know, I, I don't, I, I, I think I said before this when we were chatting, I did, you know, I did, that I'm a slow reader. So um, for me, wall of text is just, I, oh, it's, it's so brutal. So I was like, if it's brutal for adults, I can't imagine what that's like for kids. And that's what kind of spurred me on that. And I found research and that led me to, you know, dyslexia friendly. And then I the learning the learning the, the seven different learning styles. You know, I have a twin brother. He is great with learning. If you just yabber at him, I need pictures. So <laughs> it's, and it's amazing because I think that's so important also because as we get older, we learn our best learning style, but like, you know, nobody teaches that to us as right. kids. And then we're all sitting through college classes and we're like, I don't, I'm not retaining any of this. <laughs> I think financial education, I'm sure you can agree, is I think the most important thing that you can teach your kids and that you can learn because it's, you're literally using it every day of your life. I know that they used to have classes. I remember learning checks. Did you get taught about finance when you were a kid? I it's did a little cool. bit. I did, but it was not part of any set curriculum. It was because I had a an awesome seventh grade teacher that, that took oh, that's even else. better. Yeah, she she opened up a little. She took a janitor's closet and turned it into the school store where I the seventh grade class ran that. She incorporated it, if you will, so that every seventh grader would have a share of stock in the school store and we would work it and then we'd get dividends on the profits. And then she enrolled us in a stock market game. That's and, so cool. But, but she took it upon herself just with out of her own, her own skill set and what she thought we should learn, but it wasn't anything that came down from a district or anything like that. Oh, that's so awesome. I mean, that's, that's great that she did. I wish, I wish more schools would include this. I actually do have a, a curriculum for classrooms, by the way. That's actually where the homeschool curriculum came from. Um, okay. Because that, I mean, that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to get into classrooms because they, I knew there are teachers who were doing this. And, and that's just, just a credit to them as educators and their passion and what they want kids to like learn and get out of it and get out of school. But they just, they're not given enough support. And it's, to me, it's the saddest thing when you have a great teacher like that and, you know, they have to, because they have to, you know, you have to get all the pieces, all the things and figure everything out without much support from the district or from, I assume from the, I'm assuming she got approved for it, but <laughs> from the principal. But, uh, you know, the, these are such important lessons and it's a shame that these, that these teachers with so much passion don't have that support. Um, and so, yeah, we actually do have a school curriculum in case there are any educators. Um, and that's made for classrooms. I don't know how that's going to go today, but <laughs> uh, but then then that's how we got to the homeschooling curriculum because I wanted to make sure that again we could teach as many kids as possible about finance and financial education and get the the knowledge in the hands of the people who needed it the most. My grandfather did that with his closet when I was a kid, <laughs> where he had a store and he would hide. He used to work at Texaco. Like there's, I think, like a handful of Texaco's in the country now. The gas station, and they used to have Texaco money. I still actually have Texaco money, and 
we, he would hide the Texaco money around his house and we would go find it, me and my twin brother. And then when he would come home from work, we'd go to his store and buy like toys and stuff that he had in there. And it never occurred to me that maybe that influenced me somehow. I don't know, but that's similarly to your teacher who, who did that for you guys. That's so cool. <laughs> you, never, you never know what you do that, that's planting that seed for someone else or that spark, especially with kids. Yeah. Never. It's, it's, a, it's so funny because the longer I've done this, the more I've seen, you know, my love with the game of cash flow and growing up with, uh, seeing Robert Kiyosaki on stage when I was a kid back when my parents were in Amway and, you know, just all those little things, my grandfather, and it never occurred to me until like legit, we, I've never talked to anyone about cash flow until this past year. And I was like, wait a minute. I, I love that game. Like, Oh, this makes sense now. <laughs> I know how I got here. Although as unplanned as it was. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not a lot of kids uh, say they got to see Kiyosaki on stage growing up or know about I, I didn't care about seeing him on stage when I was a kid though. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was immensely bored. <laughs> Just goes to show you, you'll appreciate it later. You'll yeah. appreciate it later. <laughs> I don't remember anything from that event, but uh, because of course he was talking there for the parents. Right. Uh, not for me necessarily, but I mean, I remember it. So maybe it had an effect. I don't know. Uh, but I mean, hopefully that we, you know, we're both planting seeds and in, in, in families and, and parents that, and hope that it'll make a, a lasting impression because I really think that this is financial education. It, it's going to impact people on like a long scale. And Jumpstart Coalition for Financial Education, they actually have statistics on that and it's proven that it does. Um, and it's actually referenced in our curriculum and on our site, but you can go look it up, just Jumpstart uh, Coalition for Financial Education. They do a, a survey every year on states that actually incorporate financial education. It's really, really cool. Yeah, it, it is, it's impressive. They see um, you know, credit card borrowing go down. They, they yeah. Proof that it does make a difference. Oh, well. Victoria, this has been a lot of fun. I've really, really enjoyed chatting with you and yeah. you know you a little better. And I, I appreciate your mission and what you are accomplishing. It's really wonderful to see and you can just see the passion that you have for the subject. And um, I know you've planted a lot of really good seeds for a lot of kids. And Hopefully, both of us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I know they appreciate that and if they, if they if they don't now, they certainly will as they grow up and get older. So I think so. I think that a lot of a lot of kids are really going to see the value of a lot of things that you know you're helping their parents teach them, and that all of us that you've had on the podcast are, are really trying to do when they're older a lot more. Then they'll be like, "Oh, that was so glad I knew that." Right. <laughs> oh. Well, thank thank you so much for being on the show. I really, really do appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. And for everybody else that is out there listening, we appreciate you doing so. We appreciate you being here. And we will see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye. This podcast is sponsored by Winrick Wealth. To learn more about how we can help you plan for your future or for a second opinion on your current plan, visit our website at www.winrickwealth.com. Dot com or call 949-547-4313. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member FINRA and SIPIC. Winrick Wealth, teaching kids to buy stocks, Golden Seal Productions, and OC Talk Radio are not affiliated with LPL Financial. The opinions in this matter are for general information only and not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations or a substitute for specific tax or legal advice for any individual. We suggest that you discuss your specific situation with a qualified tax or legal advisor. No strategy assures success or protects against loss. JJ's book, Teaching Kids to Buy Stocks, Stories and Lessons for Grown-Ups, is available at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and other fine book retailers. Learn more at TeachingKidsToBuyStocks.com. Piggy Banks to Wall Street is proud to be a part of the Golden Seal Productions family of shows. <laughs>